okay, I want to talk a bit about the third dimension. What I'm not showing here, this is two dimensions, so we have x dimension and we have y dimension. Okay, but when I when I'm showing that this signal was coming out, uh, it's actually coming out over the top of all those pixels in the third dimension, in the z dimension. So let me try to draw out that third dimension to give you a sense of what it looks like. Well, actually, let me start with a new canvas. I've got the new canvas here. Let me draw, and I'm going to try my best to make sure this comes out. Let's say this was that array that I drew earlier. And it's supposed to be well, soft scale, but... So that's what I was drawing earlier. Now let's say we're flipping it on its end. So we're going to flip it like that. Okay, and what we're going to see if we flip it like that, let me draw out the pixels first. It's off the screen, but you can see the pixels are here. I'm trying to get this into dimension, but I don't think it's working very well. Anyway, those are the pixels. So this, uh, let's say rather, this pixel here is that pixel there. Let me get a different color. This pixel here is this pixel here, and uh, this pixel here is this pixel there okay now I'm gonna look at the end of this thing so there's actually a volume here right? some kind of volume there we go here's our photodiode where here was the n type and here was the p type so if uh, and this is grounded down here if the photon comes in from the side Actually, it doesn't come in from the side. It comes in either from this way or this way. But let's say it came, let's say for the sake of argument, it came in from the side, and we create an electron hole pair. Electron hole pair. The hole would go this way and out of the imager, and the electron would most likely go to its nearest pixel. Now, in the silicon, there's nothing separating one pixel from another. There's there's no hardcore division down down the silicon here. It's all just one mass of silicon. Different, different doping profiles, but one mass of silicon. So an electron created here could, even though it's closest to this pixel, it could maybe find its way over to this pixel or one further in the array. Statistically, those things can happen. Okay, I'm going to look at this front edge, and I'm going to redraw it. I'm going to draw this front edge down below. Down below. Okay. Let me get white again. Okay. Let me draw kind of a squiggle off on this side and a squiggle off on this side to represent that it's going mostly to infinity. Okay, we've got this here. We've got the, well, let me back up a second. I think I drew that too large for what I want to demonstrate. Okay, squiggle here, squiggle here. This side, put that up a little more, like that, okay. I'm going to draw this a little more to scale. So there's n-type and there's p-type. Usually, the, the, the p-type substrate is much, much, much thicker than the n-type substrate. So that's what I tried to capture there. Now, uh, let's say that there's an oxide sitting on top. So this is grounded. Let's say there's an oxide sitting on top of the n-type. And I'm going to draw that. I'll try to draw that in a different color. Does gray work? Yeah. Well, not, not too well. Uh, let's draw it in green. Okay, there's an oxide sitting there. There's the oxide. That's an insulating material. Oxide, I'll just write out insulator. Oxide insulator sitting there. Where this is silicon, and this is also silicon. Okay? On top of that oxide, there's metal. And let, let's let's draw an imaginary division of these pixels. I, I said that there's no structure that makes it all the way through the silicon, but let's imagine that we just kind of want to divide it up into a pixel. There's one, and there's another. Okay. Uh, let's draw the metal. So let's say we have metal here that's covering part of the pixel. And we got it here, covering that part of that pixel. And we got it here, covering that part of that pixel. Okay, now you can see that there is that third dimension coming in and out of the page. And 
we can do a couple things with the way light comes in. Light, oh, this is, let me pause for a second. Okay, I paused to erase. Uh, light for most image sensors is going to come in from the top. So let's say we had red light. Red light. Oh, I'll draw it actually in its true color. Let's say red light is coming in. And let's say each pixel gets one, it gets two photons. So there's six photons. It doesn't work out like that, but let's say there's six photons. So those photons come in and they penetrate into the silicon. So this photon actually is blocked by the metal, but this guy makes it all the way in. And this guy makes it all the way in. Uh, this guy is blocked by the metal, this guy makes it all the way in, and this guy is blocked by the metal. Of the six photons that were incident upon the silicon, we have three that made it into the silicon. And each one of those photons is going to create an electron hole pair, and we'll read out the electron. Now this is not ideal. This is called front side illumination. We're illuminating from the same side as the metal. That's called front side illumination. Is there a way we can collect more of that light rather than having it hit the metal and just be blocked? Well, let me backtrack a little bit and show you that indeed, yes, there is a way. Let's say we filled in the rest, filled in around the metal with more oxide. Okay. Fill in with more oxide. And then on top of that oxide, we draw lenses. We have lenses, and these will be with some sort of polymer material, like polyimide. And let's say they're spaced like this. There's one. There's one per pixel, but they're slightly offset. Okay, and you'll see why. I'm really not drawing this to scale, but they're mounds. So those are micro lenses. Micro lenses. Okay, what's going to happen to that red light now? So let's say that the light hit, well, let's say this one hit, was going to go there, this one was going to go there, this one was going to go there, one goes, I, I'm not drawing this exactly right, but one there, one there and one was going to hit there. I, this is really awfully drawn, not drawn to scale. But what's going to happen? Well, this this guy is now going to hit that lens and it's going to be directed off to the side a little bit, a little bit off this way. This one is going to hit that lens and be directed. Instead of coming straight down and hitting the metal, it's going to be redirected through that opening and down into the silicon. This guy is pretty much still going to come straight on. This guy is going to hit that piece there and it's going to be redirected slightly this way and maybe it misses the metal and makes it into the silicon. This guy comes straight on and this guy comes this way a little bit. So now of the six photons, we've collected pretty much six of them. They aren't going to show up exactly in the silicon where they got where they would be directly imaged, but they're all making it in and so our quantum efficiency is higher for the the the, the percentage of the incident photons making it into the silicon is higher. And that's external quantum efficiency. Now let's look at it a different way. Wouldn't it be nice if we didn't have to worry about that metal at all? What if we could send the photons in from this way instead? There's no metal there. Well, that's great. That's called backside illumination. Backside illumination. Backside illumination. Or BI. And that works well if, and only if, you can deplete this entire p-type silicon. So that means that the thickness of this layer has to either be thin enough or the doping has to be low enough that for a given voltage you can deplete the whole thing. Otherwise you'll have a lot of field-free regions and the field-free region and the, the carriers will run around and not end up where you want them to. Let me draw an example, I'll try to draw what I mean. And I'll go to white so I don't have too many colors floating around. Let's say you created a charge cloud here. Let's say there are three electrons. What you would like is for those three electrons to end up in this pixel because that's the one uh, directly in line with it. But that may not happen because even though it, it may see an electric field pushing it or pulling it towards the front side, uh, let's say at the back surface we're not fully depleted so there's a field-free region and they start to diffuse laterally before they find their way into the electric field the depletion region, and now instead of all three electrons ending up here, we get one here, one here, 
and one there. There was diffusion in this direction and drift in this direction. So they don't end up all where you want them to be. And let me define that. So drift is where you're dominated by electric field. Electric field dominates and diffusion is where there's no electric field and so you're thermally thermally dominated. That's probably not entirely clear. Um, try to, I'll try to clarify it in some future videos.